Okay, let's continue with the UEFI development here. I am now fully, at least for programming, fully on Linux, Alpine Linux that is. So I got my main the whole desktop set up now. I got a dual boot going, so this is on bare metal. That has nothing to do with the rest of this, but I had to redo audio filters and, and OBS and, you know, I had to do all that fun stuff set up because all the VSTs aren't available, at least without like Carla or Yabridge or something, but I got Linux native stuff set up. So anyway, this is kind of a test video as well to see how uh, basically the sound and lighting and, and everything looks as far as the Linux setup versus the Windows one, as well as recording my laptop, which I'll do in a few minutes, seeing how that works as part of this. But anyway, we'll get on with this. Um, just one quick change, I think, before I get going. Making the objects in the make file, this is wholly redundant at the moment since we have the dependent files, the .ds made for the objects. These .d files include how to make each object, how to make each .o file. It includes the, the source recipe there. And being included in the make file means that line is basically copy pasted here. So we don't need to know how to make the objects. We already have that from this depends line. So we can remove that without any, any uh, consequence there. We can make it, it'll all still work the same. So just wanted to show that we don't need that there. So in EFI.C, I had a couple things I wanted to look at as well, I think for printf that I want to make better later. <laughs> Maybe not for printf, for one of these, git key. So I don't know why I didn't see this, but we're returning the key regardless, so I really don't need that. So really, I don't need this, and we can make it a one-liner. We're going to return the key no matter what. If there wasn't a key, we're going to return null effectively for that, so that's fine. And I think there was one other thing, but I don't really remember. It was a return true, I believe, print int. It was somewhere above here. It might not have been there. I don't know. There was something I was figuring I needed to not return true, but that is not there. Maybe it was a result from here. Oh yeah, it was down here. Okay. So in printf, a result is false and we're going to end if we had an invalid specifier, if it wasn't a, a string or a digit or a hex digit. Right, it goes to end, but we're returning result true. I don't want to do that. <laughs> if it's false, then we need to return false, right? If it's true, well, we can probably set it to true to begin with. So if we don't hit false, we know we have a, a success case there. So that was that. Okay, so what do I actually want to do on this video? Well, I want to start off by changing this to do here, which I think is the only, well, that's not the only one. <laughs> I want to change this to do here. Instead of just printing shutdown, I want to actually shut down the machine, emulated or actual that we're working with. So we can do that. Um, I can look that up. That's part of runtime services. So in the runtime services, it's going to be mis miscellaneous down here, 8.5 and reset system. So we need to add this, although I don't think I have runtime services currently. So let me check that. Actually, do I have runtime? It's part of the system table down here. I don't have it. So I need to add that in first, so let me do that. I'll uncomment runtime services. We'll go ahead and add that up here. It's before, or is it after? It's before boot services in the table. So I can add that before boot services here. So we'll add that here. Runtime services. And that is in section 4.4. something here. It's not 8.5.1, it's above where we define the system table. Runtime services table, so 4.5.1. So we have this table here. I'll move that over to 2. So this is 4.5.1. We have the same table header, although now that I got everything set up more how I like it, I should be able to just copy paste because I got a clipboard with, I think, X clip. So if I just do that, I can middle mouse click. And it copies everything with, well, it kind of strips the new lines, but that's all right. This would make it a little bit faster to sort of initially type things out, I think, and that's okay. It explains all that we have here. We'll be doing reset system. Maybe the M got cut off there, resets the platform. Um, I can show how I, I guess, would do this because we can change these things here. All I really have to do is shift J to do that and then, you know, add some new lines there, but we can make this look better very quickly since it copies over pretty consistently. It just strips all new lines for some reason. 
Don't know why. Query capsule capability, that did not quite get there. Capabilities. And then we only have query variable info. Okay. So these things like boot services down here, I'm going to only implement certain things at a time. And they, the ones I don't want implemented, I'll have a void star just to take up the same amount of space because I know these are all going to be function pointers for this table specifically, other than the table header up here, of course, but we already have that defined. So the fact that I know they're all function pointers means that means that I know they'll take up the same amount of space on my system for x86, 64. They'll all take up eight bytes, but I don't want it to have the name unless I'm actually messing with this. So I'll change these to void star, make a little macro. Let's say we change it to void star, get rid of that, and then go to the next line and stop recording. So we should be able to do at A and just redo that for all these other than the ones we want. I could have changed the macro to also probably comment out the line with the actual name, but that's all right. So I'm not going to use these right now other than reset system, which is going to be what EFI reset system. And that doesn't have a pointer. So we'll go ahead and do that. So it needs to be defined before this is defined, of course. So I'll put that uh, probably after wait for event. We'll just do that. And I think that was 8.5. If I remember, yeah, 8.5.1. So we'll put that here, and I can try this out again, actually. We'll just copy all that. Delete and copy paste. Ooh, I like it. Except sometimes you see, since they don't test their stuff, I don't think. <laughs> or maybe it works for screen readers or something. They don't really test their, uh, their conversion to PDFs, although a lot of these, they have the same errors in the HTML pages online, but this slash should not be here. They're not going to escape the pointer. Like, what are they doing? That's just some issue in the, the tool they're using to generate this, but it doesn't return anything. It's void because it shouldn't return. It really should just turn off your PC or reboot it, right? But we take in a reset type, a status, the size of optional data and the data. We can just pass a void for that. So if this returns, which it shouldn't, but if it does, you can optionally specify some data to pass back to give whatever application you're using or the, the system firmware itself some info about, you know, why it died <laughs> and why it might have returned sort of not rebooting successfully. So the reset type is defined right here. It's an enum. Uh, we have a status code for that. I'm just going to say it should be normal. So the status code should be success. If you're programming and you reboot for some unknown reason or you, you capture an error in your code and you want to reset at that point, then you could return another status. But we'll return success. We'll say we're supposed to be shutting off or rebooting at the point that we use this function. Data size is the size of reset data. And the buffer, can you can pass a string back followed by additional binary data, which is a description that the caller can use to indicate the reason for a reset. So you could pass back a string that's like reset because bad data, right? That could be a literal string. And you'd pass that back as well as the size of the string, if I'm understanding this correctly. But the firmware may do something with that. Or the caller, if you loaded another image from your OS application and that returned unexpectedly from this function, then I guess you could do something with that in your code. But I won't be using it. I will be using the reset type, however. So that'll be all right. If I reset type, and that's also an 851. Uh, get rid of that. And we'll just type that out. And again, for some reason it gets rid of, um, it doesn't paste in new lines, but that's all right. So we have cold, warm, shutdown, and specific. Cold is just a, you know, a cold reset, <laughs> sort of a power off and power on, a power cycle reset. A warm reset would be if you do like reboot from Windows or something, or maybe reboot from Linux as well. I think it probably does a warm reset, keeps things in memory, doesn't power cycle everything. Cycle boundaries, yeah, system power cycle is a cold reset. So if I shut down, should shut off and not reboot the machine, I guess according to the ACPI S5 sleep or G3 state. 
If it is not supported, then the system will reboot and exhibit a power cycle reboot or the cold reboot. Platform specific is probably specific to your system or firmware. It's not gonna be documented in here. That's specific to your machine. I'm gonna just do the reset shutdown to say, hey, if we're done with things, then we'll probably wanna shut down. They need a comma there. Uh, and yes, yeah, so these would be defined as zero, one, two, three as well, if you just wanna put those literals, but we won't do that. We'll go back to C and we'll see if we can use this. So let's move it. Well, I'll keep it there just so I remember the stuff. But instead of pressing escape, if we do press escape, I don't want it to, not instead of, if we do press escape, I don't want to print a text. I want to actually reset instead of doing an infinite loop for no reason. So let's do that. We will call this, this is in runtime services, which I don't think we have a variable set up. No, I had, okay, I had a placeholder though. So let's set that up first. If I runtime services RS. And we can set that up in when we initialize the global variables in the system table. So sys table should be runtime services. We already had that defined, that's good. Okay, so that's already initialized from main immediately, so that's good. We'll have that available then. So we'll just call the runtime services uh, reset system here, which I think is just reset, reset system, just to make sure. Yeah, reset system right here. Okay, so we'll call that with the type, which we'll do EFI reset cold. No, we won't, we'll do EFI reset shutdown, I believe, yeah. And then other than that, we'll give it a status. Let's say we give it a success. And then UNT N data size will do zero because we're doing null for optionally, optionally no data there. And that should reset. We should not return. I'll say notes. This should not return. System should power off. I think there's an attribute for that. Or uh, C23 should have attributes of either, I don't remember if it's no return or unreachable, but it's one of the, it's something like that. But I think you can do, I don't remember what it's called, but there's an attribute that says, hey, the code should not go here, built into the compilers. But in the C23 standard, I believe there is a no return attribute you can use with the square brackets. Um, I may be misremembering. I don't think there's anything else we need. I might make this a constant that we later move into a library with stuff anyway instead of having a magic number. So I can add that up here just while I'm here and thinking about stuff and not typing on my keyboard correctly. I'll have global constants. Let's say we can make them enums as well. I'll just have a define. I don't know what to call it. I'll do scan code as a sort of namespace. We'll say escape and this will be hex 17. If we go back, we can do scan code escape that should work and all right. And it loads up. Okay, let's just do this. So mode number is invalid because I pressed F for full screen thing. So one is invalid, zero is valid, two, just making sure things work, two, three, four, and escape. Shut it down. Hey, so that's good. I will check. Let me see. It looked like I might have had a warning there. Let me make sure. I do have a warning because I misspelled some things. Data definition has an, oh, okay. So the capabilities went to the next line and I didn't see that. <laughs> so 305. There's where it went. Capabilities went down there because I didn't copy paste correctly. There we go. It doesn't make every time, no, okay. All right, so reset works. Uh, let me put this on the other screen right now. So I want to, see how things look like on the laptop as far as reset is concerned. All right, I actually got the laptop being captured in OBS without, well, technically with a webcam, with the phone and, and droid cam. But uh, okay, I'm gonna put the USB in the laptop here on the side. Hopefully you don't see too much blurry footage of, of hairy hands here, but I'll turn it on. Press F12, I'll get to the boot menu. I probably need a better way of not showing my arm like all the way over here or something, but 
Uh, let's use that. So this uses a crap ton of bitrate being at 4K and having the, the laptop video settings and stuff, but I get sharper text. So you should be able to read this pretty plainly and clearly. I'm not sure zooming in would help for these, but I should be able to zoom in. That's just as a test, right? So I probably won't be zoomed in because I'll have to constantly move the thing and I don't have auto panning and a gimbal freaking whatever you call that thing, tripod, handheld. But we can check what text mode is on here. Zero is the default, 80 by 25. One should be twice as big, 80 by 50. And that's why I'm not zooming in because it'll constantly change. So two, 100 by 31, and then three here, zero based is going to be, sorry, I tried to mess with the focus, but I, I think that's as clear as it'll be. But three is uh, the text mode that takes up the full screen. So I could change stuff later to say, query all the available text modes and then find the largest one and just set that automatically because that should be clear and print more things. So I might change to do that right now. I'll probably just leave it at whatever the default is. On your machine, it'll probably be similar. 80 by 25 is the baseline supported mode. So it probably is why that defaults, but that just gives you an example. If my screen was a lot bigger on the laptop, maybe like a 17 inch laptop or something, this is a 13. Um, you might even have more text modes, or one might be larger than 240 by 56. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Changing the text mode doesn't change the size of the characters, though. All it has an effect on is basically what region of the screen is being used. So the text mode <laughs> for at least this laptop and the firmware it has for UEFI, the text modes just affect a sort of bounding box size or a rectangle size, a subset of the screen. Whereas the highest mode is just the full screen is available according to the size of the characters, right? Which I don't know. They might default to 9 by 16 or whatever VGA defaults to, but okay. Anyway, enough of that spiel. If I press escape, it turns off. So it works the same as reset shutdown and emulation, which was the goal. And I'm happy because not everything works the same on hardware usually. So I'm happy about that. This is a laptop test. So um, anyway, that'll be fun to edit with the giant bit rate that this produces, but yeah, I'll move on from here. I think I'm going to change to make a sort of menu system with highlighted rows. And then after that, and if we're able to choose text mode from that, and I still have time, um, <laughs> I'll move on to getting the graphics mode, the GOP, and we'll make another sub menu to choose that. So look forward to that next. All right, I'm going to continue on with this some more. I've just committed the reset system stuff here. So I want to change from the current, just enter in a number to change the text mode sort of way of interacting with this. I want to change that to have a sort of highlighted menu that you'd choose a line of text on the screen for a choice from a menu of choices and you'd press enter and it would go on and, and run that choice, right? That'd be a little bit better UX. We could constrain the cursor to just the menu. We could print out like keybinds on the screen. We could do stuff to make it a little bit easier and better to interact with. So I want to do that. Have slightly more, slightly more professionalism, maybe. So I'll do that. So the current stuff, the current choosing a text mode, I kind of want to change to do a menu as well. But right now I'm just going to probably relegate that to its own function that we can call from an, an initial main menu. So we can have an initial menu of choices like choosing a text mode or graphics mode or something else. And the text mode choice would go to the choose a text mode thing. So I'll probably do that. So let's say we have a function to do that, that I'll move the code into. So it'll be choose or set text mode. I guess set is less characters. <laughs> so I'll say that. And for these, for error or status propagation, I can just have them all return an EFI status back to main, which returns its own EFI status. Maybe that'll make it easier to handle errors later. We'll see. But just naming the comment the same thing isn't great, but that's all right. Right now, we won't take anything. We can do that later if we need to. And by default, I'll return success. Get rid of compiler errors there. All right. So how do I want to do this? I want to get the number from the user, do all the same stuff. Current text mode that we're doing. I'll probably put everything that's in here. I'll copy over to there. I'll, I'll still clear the screen for like an initial menu that we'll have. I'll probably copy that. Yeah, I'll copy that up here. 
Um, but everything else about choosing the menu, I'll just cut and paste over there. Which I think is that one. Yeah. All right, so just gut the whole thing. <laughs> That'll be all right. So we'll enter that. It'll choose the text mode query. It'll do everything else. Okay. So if we just want to call that immediately. We can do that just to make sure it still works. System table con out is not available in the other thing. Um, I'll change all those references. Since we initialize the global variables here, we can use C out for all these. So even if it's not available, because system table is only here in the entry point, but we can just change that all to C out, which is Less code and typing as well, which is nice. So that means I have to change it within this function as well. And this I could change to printf, which I'm not, but that's okay. So just everywhere we have basically system table. All right, I just wanna make sure that still works. So it immediately yeah, loads the text mode screen, escape still exits. I probably wanna change that because this will be within like another menu deep. So we'll do change escape to go back to main menu, not power off, but I'll change that in a bit. So, okay, how do I make a main menu thing? Well, we got to print a menu and be able to choose the choices. So how do we want to handle that? I'm going to be redrawing the menu, I guess, if, uh, if the user moves to a different choice within the menu, and since we're gonna like highlight the current row, I have to be redrawing the rows. So if I wanna do that, I might just redraw the menu overall. Um, regardless, I guess if we go into an option and come back. So if we go into choose text mode and we go back to the main menu, I'm gonna redraw the main menu, right? So I probably wanna have the main menu be in its own loop like it is now, but we'll redraw the screen every time in the menu options or choices. So I'm trying to decide, I can make it like global, I can make just strings within this loop, that might work right now. So I'll just do that. So I have character pointer, an array of those, be char 16. <laughs> All right, we'll have a char 16 T pointer array, I'll call it menu choices, that'll be all right. I was trying to think, do I wanna make like a double array here because I can constrain the size to the width of the screen, but no, we'll just, we'll just do this. We can initialize it here. It'll point to this, that'll be all right. We don't need memset for this initialization, I don't think. So I'll have some strings here. Let's say we have set text mode. And when we print it out, we can add a new line on the end, so we don't need that. We'll just have set text mode and set graphics mode. These will be the first two here. Clear the screen here. Let's write what I'm gonna do. So print, we'll say menu choices. The first one I'll highlight. We'll say highlight. First option as initial choice. And then we'll, you know, print rest of options or choices. Either one, I'll use it interchangeably. Okay, and then we'll, you know, we'll get input and we'll, uh, you know, we'll process the input, right? Okay, and that'll probably have its own loop maybe Set text mode, we'll do according to the input that we do. So print the choices first. So let's say for EFI, we'll have a UNT in just to go through the choices. I will be less than the number that's in there, which is the size of the array. I could make that a macro, that's fine. I'll add another global thing up here, except we'll call it, I don't know, macros. I guess they'll, they'll be global by default in that. Well, not really by default, but. We'll have macros, let's say we have array size. And we'll define that for an array. Array size X will be defined as um, size of X. Well, X won't be a type, it'll be an instance. So we'll have size of X divided by size of X offset by zero. So the first element in the array, the whole array divided by that, that should give the number of elements in the array or the size of the array. That's what I'm saying here. So if I use that, I less than array size of our menu choices, that should be two. Should say the overall size, because it's a constant, we'll know the size of the overall thing divided by, well, it should just be divided by a pointer here, not 
the other thing, but we'll see. <laughs> that should work here, I'm assuming. So the first one we want to highlight, actually. So let's do that. So how do I highlight stuff? We can print the rest of them here, which we can just do print F. And let's say we're going to print a string and a new line, maybe, or just the string. I'm going to print the new line first. And the reason I'm doing that is so that the last thing in the menu that we print, so right here there's only two, right? We'll print text mode and then go down a line and print graphics mode. So th this being the last thing that's going to print, I want to make sure the cursor doesn't move beyond the menu. So to constrain or to, to limit the cursor to the bottom of our list of choices, I can print the new line at the start, not at the end. So there won't be a trailing new line after the last thing in the menu, right? That's why I'm doing this at the start. Okay, so if we print that, the string we're going to print is going to be whatever menu string we're doing here. So menu choices I. And we'll start at 1, because I'm going to print the zeroth one as a highlighted choice just to start off the whole program here. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, first off, yeah, we're going to have to print the zeroth choice there. And we can right now just see if that prints repeatedly, right? It'll it'll flicker because it's going as fast as it can. I could do true here, not one. That would make more sense. Okay, so it just prints, you know, set text mode, set graphics mode, right? We're not doing anything. So how do we highlight the first choice or whatever the user is currently selected? Um, well, that depends on what highlighting means, how you define it. So if something like, you know, if we're highlighting this text here, or if I'm in, you know, this, and we get it like this weird lime green color kind of, what does this mean? What is highlighting actually doing? Well, we have a couple colors here, right? We have the text color, and we have whatever's behind the text. So we have the illusion of drawing text on the screen. We're basically drawing two different pixels here, right? One, a certain color for the text, and one a certain color for, say, the background. And that's what we have available within UEFI from, you know, it's VGA roots and all that. We have foreground and background colors. So we can set those to have sort of a normal default color scheme, we'll say, and a, a highlighted scheme, if you will, where the background and the foreground colors might change to show that the user has selected something. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll put them up here as constants. Um, I probably want to make constants all caps just for, you know, visual cues here. So let's make those all caps. Should have been the only time I did that. Yeah. All right. So how do we do that? I'm just going to formally define our colors here. I'll say default foreground color, maybe in default background. So I could spell them out, but uh, this this is fine. So foreground color is what we have EFI, the EFI colors. <laughs> I think I just called them, I need VS. I think I just called them like the EFI colors if I don't do that. EFI, like EFI yellow. Yeah, I just called them these colors. Okay. So the default ones I'm doing right now are yellow on blue. So I'll label those as my defaults. So yellow will be the foreground and blue would be the background. And we'll have a couple colors for, let's say, highlighting. Or selecting the current row. So let's say we'll have a highlight color and I'll do, I'll do like blue on cyan. You can change this or I might change it later. We'll say we have blue on cyan. Because that looks okay when we highlight things. So what do we do with those? Uh, well, first of all, we can change how we set the attribute here. To default foreground color. It's still hard-coded, but it's only one place to change it later if you want to use, say, you know, a certain color set. You don't have to change them later in the code, just wherever you initially defined them. But we'll do that for that. Okay, so that shouldn't change anything, right? No, text is still there. It looks the same. So how do we highlight? We just use the other colors, really. So we can do set attribute. We could make a wrapper function for this. That's less stuff to type out or copy and paste. But that's all right. Instead of the default, we'll have the highlight colors. 
So highlight foreground and background, we'll draw this. Of course, all the text would then be these colors, so we have to set it back to the defaults after for the regular ones. Right? So what that will do, we'll just print, you know, these two lines in different colors right now. Okay, so the text mode is, you know, we'll say highlighted, graphics mode is not. So that's working. So then we want to be able to choose those with, say, the arrow keys and enter key or other keys that you want. I could also type at the bottom the keybinds because I'm going to forget these, so I might do that as well. Uh, we could do that before or after. It doesn't really matter. I'll do it before just so that we can start typing the menu at the top of the screen from 0, 0. So we can, like, clear the screen to reset before we print things. I'll do that, actually. That'll reposition the cursor. I don't want a clear screen, though. I want to set the cursor. So set cursor position, C out. I think it's column and then row. But I shouldn't guess. Set cursor position. Yeah, this column and row. Okay. So column would be wherever we're currently at. Although if I want to just set it to 0, 0, I can just set it to 0, 0. But column would be where, you know, horizontally we want to draw. The row would be vertically. So if I want to write, like, keybinds at the bottom of the screen, I can do that. Which would be moving to the bottom of the screen, but not writing at the bottom, because that would draw past the bottom, and it would, you know, physically scroll the screen. I don't want to do that. I want to write, like, right above the bottom, so it ends basically at the bottom of the screen. So what I can do is set the cursor position offset from the last row, which if we start in 80 by 25, that would be 24 for zero-based indexing, because UEFI has zero as an index, so it should be zero-based. But I don't want to hard code that. We want to get whatever we currently have. And whatever we currently have for the column and row is, um, while we have the cursor positioning, the current cursor positioning in the mode structure, we don't have the text modes overall, you know, 80 by 25 cursor columns and rows. So to get that, we do have to call query mode initially. So let's do that. Get current text mode, say columns by rows values. Let's say we have uint in columns and rows. Um, I'm going to make this just an int n, as you'll see later, because sometimes they're defined as uint n, sometimes they are int32. I'll just make it int n for argument's sake, or just int32, really. That's fine. So I want to get those with query mode. And we'd call that with the current mode number. I should really just keep this up, because I keep forgetting. <laughs> I don't have all these functions memorized. That takes in this implicitly, takes in mode number. Mode number would be the mode we're currently in, which would be within the mode structure dereference, so mode mode. And we'd give it references to columns and rows, pointers to those. Okay. So now that we have those, we know where the bottom of the screen is. That's in rows here. So we can set the cursor position to the start of the row at the bottom of the screen, offset by however many lines of text we're going to print. So let's say we print two lines of text. You know, we can print F at that point now and say we'll have up or down arrow equals, we'll say, select or choose or something. I don't know, we'll say that. <laughs> Not great, but that's all right. We'll go down one and we'll say enter equals select. Well, those are both synonymous, aren't they? <laughs> Let's say move. I don't know, move row, move cursor. Not sure the right uh, wording I should use here. And this will be select. And I'll have a third one because we can, I'll do this minus three then. We can do escape. So I'm going to have that as an option. We'll have escape, escape, and that will be shut down. We don't need to go past the end of the screen there. It will scroll. So three lines up from the bottom in our text mode. We'll print this stuff. And then we'll print the menu above that. Right, so there we go. 
So that prints at the bottom, up and down, enter, escape, and then we have set graphics mode, which is probably not what I wanted. Incompatible pointer type. Expected you went in. Well, I mean, we could limit it later. I guess we do need you went in for that. That's going to be annoying later, though. And they're just zero right here. But okay. That's 64-bit versus 32-bit, so it probably would be better. Yeah, and then there's no warnings. Okay, and then that prints everything correctly, too. So that's what we have so far. I want to be able to move... I want to be able to move the highlighted text up and down to select the option, so I'll work on that. You know, how would we do that? We have to get the key input down here. Get rid of that. Okay, so we'll do... If I input key, key equals get key. And we have to process that, right? So I'm going to switch on, we could switch on like the scan code or the Unicode character, do things differently. I'm going to switch on the scan code just for the arrow keys and in and the, well, enter isn't defined, but it should just be a an R here. But I'll check the scan code first and then like the Unicode character, like the carriage return. So this will, the scan code will handle arrow keys and escape is why I'm doing that. So we'll switch, we'll say we have a default, we're gonna break, or we can switch on <laughs> uh, the Unicode character. If we wanna do other stuff later, right now I won't. I'll just have it be if we did the enter key, then we'll choose whatever choice we did. So if that equals the carriage return, that should be the enter key, I believe, should be. Okay, but other than that, we'll have scan codes. So we'll have case, you know, scan code escape. That will be powering off. Make that a colon. And that would just call the power off that I did up here. Reset shutdown. So I'll just copy that. Just put the note here. Okay, so that would be enter, not escape. <laughs> I want to put that up here. Put that up there. Otherwise, we'll have the arrow keys. So let's do that. Let's say we have up arrow or well, we're doing scan codes. Scan code, up arrow, and down arrow, which I do not have defined right now. But EFI has them defined. They would be in the bottom. What was I looking at? Oh, reset system, yeah. They would be in, they're in B console. I just remember this because I was doing it earlier. <laughs> Simple text input protocol and input EX. So down here, it gives you a table. The first, the first column we're interested in for the scan codes. Up arrow is one, down arrow is two. Escape down here is 17. That's where I got 17 from. All right, so yeah, up arrow will be one, down arrow will be two, escape is 17. They do not have enter and pause, and they have F keys. They don't have enter, but enter should just be, they don't have it, should just be the, the carriage return. So we'll try that. So let's define these. I have up arrow and down arrow. Up arrow would be one, down arrow would be two. Okay. So what do we do if we have an up arrow? I want to say we want to move up, right, and highlight whatever row is above our current one. Unless we're at the top of the screen, then we don't want to move up, so probably need stuff for that as well. I'm getting a key. Yeah, doing that here. Wherever we're at, at this point, the menu choice is there. This would be the bottom of the menu, right? After we print this. So I can do that. These I'll make signed. So I don't have issues when I'm casting stuff later. But these ones I'll make signed because I'm going to check the first... The first thing here, if we press the up arrow and we're on row zero, I don't want to go up. 
So I'm going to check if zero, if whatever row we're on minus one is valid. So that would be a negative one. And if we use a UN's n, then I can't check if it's like larger than a value because it would be, it would roll over, right? So I don't want to do that. I'm going to make it sign so it goes negative. I'll say max or min, let's say minimum row and maximum row. So the minimum row is going to be zero. Um, the maximum row that we can use in our menu here would be whatever the cursor is on after printing everything, because I don't have a trailing new line. It'll be at the end of the menu. So this will be where, wherever the cursor is currently at, which would be the current mode, and where the cursor is for the row. So see out mode row. Okay, so what can I do with that down here for like the up and down arrows? I can check that those fall within the limits. So I can say if whatever wherever we're currently at, which would be, you know, dereferencing to get this, but I'll make another variable to make that easier. And after we print the menu, I want to go back to the start actually. So set the cursor position again. I'll say cursor row boundaries, that's probably all right. And we'll get input. Set it to the top of the menu, get input, process. Okay, so let's get wherever the cursor is currently at, which I'll need another, I'll need another loop down here. Let's make another loop. <laughs> so I'm printing the menu and I'm getting input within that menu, right? So this will be the input loop for the, the menu within the overall menu. So not great. All right, whatever. We'll have loops within loops within loops. So the inner input loop here. Uh, just say input loop. Okay, because I'm trying to think how I want to do this. <laughs> so if they press the up arrow, I want to say if they're not at the top of the screen, then we can go up. So I would say if wherever we're currently at, let's say we have a current row value. Let's do it like after here. I'll say current row equals C out mode cursor row. Okay. So if the current row is greater than, because we'll be moving negative Y values down to zero, which is the top of the screen. If the current row is greater than or equal to the minimum, I guess just greater than the minimum. Um, we want to be able to move up. So I could check if we're going to be once we move up. So I'll do negative one. Okay. If the row above the one that we're on is within the menu bounds, I want to move up right to the previous choice. So that's what this will check. Otherwise it'll go on and not do anything. So how do I do that? I want to, um, I'll say move up one row and menu. We'll de-highlight whatever the current row is. So actually I want to do that first. So we'll de-highlight current row, move up one row, highlight new row, right? We'll do those sort of three things. And down arrow would be similar, but moving down. So we'd move down one row. Um, but if this is true, well, we can de-highlight the current row by setting whatever the default colors are. Then we need to redraw wherever we're at. So one reason I did a menu as an array was so that we can offset within that according to wherever we're on in the screen, right? Once we move to like the top of the menu we wanna select. So in this case, it's easy because the menu's just at the top of the screen starting at row zero. So we can offset whatever the cursor row is from row zero into that menu. So we can just draw whatever we already did. So we can draw the, um, the menu choices, wherever the row is. So that's current row, right? We can de-highlight it by redrawing the row, redrawing the text without the highlighted colors, but the default colors. And then we can move up one row by doing current row minus minus, and then we can highlight that row, right? So I'd have to set cursor position, or we can't do print F and go backwards, I don't think. So we'd have to 
we'd have to set the cursor position and that would be zero for the column. The row would be the row minus one, which if we do minus minus, that'll already be minus one. And then we can highlight that one by setting the attribute and printing that text. So this will be the highlighted text actually. So I'll copy that. I uh, wanted to do that. Indent. Okay, yeah, and then we'll print that value. And that should move up if we're not at the top. Okay, down would be similar, but it'll be moving down. I'll just grab the whole if statement there. Dehighlight de current row, move down one row, highlight that. So dehighlight, except we'd go plus plus instead and do the same. So uh, and this would be a different condition. It would be if plus one is less than or equal to the max, but it's still pretty similar stuff. Other than the condition, it's like one line of code changes. So I could probably deduplicate this code better, abstract it a little better, but oh well. We'll see if that works for repeatedly going, I don't know, up and down in the menu. But I just want to make sure I don't have any other, oh, did I miss like an indentation there? Maybe I did. Oh yeah, well true. That should be that overall while loop. Okay. So we should be able to move up and down, get a new key, and just draw the menu text over each other. Maybe incompatible pointers. Let me fix that first. <laughs> Printf needs the little u, utf16. It still doesn't like, what, what else crap do I have? Suggest so parentheses around assignment, use this truth value. That is true. Um, let me just get these. Okay, that still made it though, even with the warnings. Argument one from incompatible pointer type. So 356. Okay, and then 373. So 356 needs, yep, needs the U for the down arrow as well. Forgot about that. And this needs to be equal equals equals equals. Okay. All right. So up and down does not do that correctly. <laughs> it does highlight and redraw text, but that is not uh, the correct way of doing that. So that's not great. I think up and down are correct though. One and two, that should be right. So it's not opposite. So de-highlight, print the net. Minus minus, go to the start of that row set the highlight colors, and then do that. But it seemed like moving up was not correct. So current row is int. Min and max are both signed as well, integers. That should be okay. But if I move up, oh, up is all right. Moving down is not correct, okay. So if this is less than or equal to the max, which should be one right now, right? But if we start at zero, one is less than or equal to one, so that's right. Set so default, prints the current one, add one, move to the new row. Let me just make sure. Make sure that a uh, set cursor is correct, right? It's not. Text, set cursor position. So yeah, column and then row. Just want to make sure that was correct. They are uint ends though, so maybe that's not right. I don't know. So I figure that would be correct. Interesting. It's like it goes down twice and then up again. Unless my array size is wrong. I guess the array size would be two for menu choices. But that's all it prints to begin with, right? So this I print, oh, I'm going down by one to start off. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> the first choice does not need a new line. One and additional ones need, need the initial new line. The first one does not, yeah. So it would start at row one, that's why. It was drawing three lines because it wasn't starting at zero. 
All right, well, that's still a little bit buggy, but uh, moving down works initially. And then I can't go down again, but when I go up from there, that's not correct. But moving down works initially. Let me check if moving up works initially. Yeah, so moving up and then down is fine, and then up again is bad. Okay. So that would tell me this isn't getting set correctly, maybe? This should be... The current row set when we move up should be set to the new one up here. After we break, we should re-go and get a new key, set a new row. I could do that first, maybe. I don't think that would matter, though. No. Okay. Um, oh, it's printing at the end of the line. Okay, I know what that is. <laughs> so it, it reprints the row, and when we move that, we go to the starting column, right? Column zero. But when I, if I have another space to move, it's printing at the end of the line, right? Because I'm not resetting to column zero when I'm moving up again. So really what I could do is set like a carriage return at the ends of these. Or even just, yeah, that would be fine. As long as the first one we have here starts, probably starts with a carriage return, that's probably fine. Or I can just, you know, go to the start after I draw it. That's okay too. Either way. Okay, this way, yeah, it doesn't write it at the end of the line, and we can go and, like, you know, sort of highlight the current line, right, if that makes sense. Escape is shut down, so all that's left now is enter. Let's do that. So let's say we do this. Let me make sure this works first off by just printing something here. So let's do slash r slash n. We'll do that a few times. All right, so let's say we go to set text mode. It prints here. Okay, we're good to go. Enter key counts as the carriage return, obviously. So that's good. So now we want to enter and select a choice. So how do we do that? Well, we can either, you know, hard code it. If, choice, if the current row is zero, then go to text mode, for example. Or if we want it to be maybe a little bit more flexible and dynamic. If we want to be a little bit more flexible and dynamic with this, I can make... Um, I can make function pointers, an array of those, to match what's in the menu choices. So I, I think right now I can just make these EFI status and void. I may change the params in here later, depending on the function, possibly. But right now, I guess I'll go with void just so I can get something working. So let's say we have an array of function pointers along with our, our menu options here. So let's do that. It would be, they'd be EFI status, right? Because that's what they're returning. And they're pointers to a function, which would be, how do I do that? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. It's an array, so we can wrap it and do an array, I think. If I can type the right characters. And we can set those up here. So what do I want to name this? I'll just say menu functions. It's probably fine. Or funks. Funky Cole Medina, we can do that. So we'll say this would be the same size as this, right? But uh, the first one's going to be text mode, so we'll say set set text mode. And the second one will be some future thing. We can say it's set graphics mode, for example. Uh, I guess I can put that under text mode. It's just going to be a stub right now that has nothing in it, but that's all right. And it'll just return EFI success. So we'll do that. So those, I think that's how you do this, right? An array of function pointers. Or does this say this is a function that takes in an array <laughs> of, of nothing? No, I think that's how you do that. Mm. Initialization of constants from incompatible type, status pointer to void. Uh, oh, it needs to be void, yep. Okay. So what if I, I... I don't remember how to do function pointer arrays, I'm sorry. It doesn't come up very often. I figured this is how you do a function pointer, though. But that's probably not correct. Clear does function returning an array? Of course. Do I have to... 
like wrap both of these, huh? Maybe. Function return array. Okay. I don't remember how to do this, so I need to look up how you do this. And I'll be right back. Okay. Figured it out. <laughs> you put the array designator with the function name here in parentheses, because it's function pointer returning this type. So pointer to a function returning EFI status, and then after you put the input params void. And then you can initialize it like this. And it works. It gives a warning that, you know, this array isn't being used, but that's fine. We have this right now. Okay, what we can do is offset into this array and then call the function, right? So let's do that here. So menu funks offset by whatever our row was, which is current row. So if they did not move with the arrow keys, then current row should not have changed. So that should work. And you know, I want to call that. So I think I just call it like that, right? Put it at the end there for the, the uh, input parameters. And then we can have a status that comes back. So if I status, we'll say return, return code, return status. I don't know, it's a little verbose, but that's all right. We'll say return status there. And you know, if it's an error, then we'll have error down. So let's say if EFI error, you know, return status, I'll print that out here. So I should make, you know, an E print F that prints the standard error. I have not done that. Let me put that. I'm going to forget. So I'll put it up here. <laughs> print the standard error also. Actually, I think that's already defined in the system table. Yeah, I have standard error right there. So to print to standard error, we'll say instead of C out, instead of con out. Okay. And I can add that up here actually. Output, input. It is output. Console output, this I can call standard error, except that's a built-in C thing. I'll say C error, I guess. That'll probably be all right. I'm gonna forget that that's there and forget to use it later, but then I should be told that it's unused by a compiler warning, so that's all right. I guess I could try to make eprintf too, right? <laughs> It would just be a copy of printf, but instead of output string here, it would print to a the other one, right? So to see out, it would be C error. So that's not great. I could do that though, right? But then I would have to make errors for the other thing. So really, eh, no, I don't want to mess with making a write buffer and doing that right now. So I'll just say to do, change to write to standard error with C error, not C out. Okay. So let's say error percent X, um, which would be whatever the return status is. Otherwise we'll have done whatever we did and we'll return and we'll be all right. So that should be okay. So we can see if that works by calling that. So graphics mode has nothing, it should return on full screen. Graphics mode does nothing, right? It should return immediately, which will in effect do nothing. Text mode should go to text mode. And since, since I still have stuff highlighted, the text is gonna look off. Sorry about that. I should reset and not do whatever I just did, which is break everything. That's why there's a black screen. I don't know why it broke, but it did. It breaks and then goes back, I guess. and and. Uh, it is not correct. So, okay. So the last thing I set is, I guess is the highlighted. So let's just make sure the last thing we do is to reset the colors. That would probably be better. Maybe that'll work a little bit better. The so text mode now it looks normal. So zero is 80 by 25, two is 100 by 31. Um, I guess I'm not redrawing the screen is why that happens. 
So this goes while true, and then it redraws stuff, but it goes back, but it doesn't have anything to redraw on the screen because I'm just getting input in this loop. That's why. So after this point, if we had an error, I can wait or get a key. I can get a key before leaving. Press key to go back, we'll say. Press the any key. <laughs> Except after this breaks, this is going to, instead of breaking out of the switch, I want to break out of the while loop. So how do I do that? Making this a function and then going back. I want to go to the main menu here, which it does clear screen and all that. Okay, so this is down there, so like here. Could do another thing. Let's do bool getting input equals true. Just have another thing here. While we're still getting input, we'll get input. And then when we break out of the switch, break out of the switch should go back here and we'll leave it. So that would be this, I don't need break. That would go out to here, yeah, okay. So this is where the switch ends. So if I need to break that here, so getting input is false no matter what after we returned. Okay, then I don't have to do anything, yeah. We'll do that. So we'll leave the input loop, reprint the main menu. You could probably do that a little bit better, but that's all right. So I feel like, oh, because default and cases are indented. I was like, that looks wrong indentation wise, but that's fine. Switch while. And that's okay. Just put a label there. All right, so that should go back and redraw the screen, hopefully. We do enter text mode and do a two. Okay, so we'll now be in the new text mode. So I should, I could get a key after we do that maybe. Just, just to put the mode on the screen, keep that on there like it used to be, but that's all right. And we exit and it works. So let me do that. Well, this is input here. I guess after I set the text mode, I leave. Yeah. Well, that doesn't redraw the screen. <laughs> it breaks the while loop there. So actually, I don't need this at all. Don't need the else condition there. We'll just print invalid stuff and go back. Because that'll get a key anyway if there was an error. All right. So set text mode, set mode 2. It doesn't clear the screen and redraw everything. Uh, and if we do escape, it exits. So escape, I will probably have be go back here instead of doing that. So escape can be break. And that'll leave this while loop, yeah, okay. But I do want to redraw the screen and everything, which would mean I have to redraw. <laughs> I don't like having a bunch of like nested loops. I think that that's, that's bad for programming here. The input loop is fine, but I do need another overall loop. That's not great, okay. At least how I'm thinking about this, which I'm thinking I need to sleep. <laughs> Tired, need to go to bed. All right, that way when we press escape, we can have it instead of breaking, we can just have it be a return. 
right from the overall function. But we'll just do this. All right, there's an error. We want to get a key. Otherwise, we'll get a key regardless. Probably do want to break then after we set a mode. So I do want to do that. If they see this, then we'll get a key first. Yeah. Set new mode, redraw screen. Okay, from outer loop. So we'll just break out of the inner loop to the outer one. All right, so set mode two. Okay, it redraws the screen, there we go. Set mode one, one is invalid. Set mode three, no, oh, set mode three, set mode four. Okay, and then we do escape. Goes back to the main menu and we're now in the, the highest graphics mode available. And we still have the text at the bottom, which is dynamically drawn as well. Move cursor, select another mode, go back, escape. So I could press, I could draw escape on the text mode screen as well, stating that it goes back. But I think we're good right now. We have the basics of you know how you draw a basic menu, up and down, select something. I think that's pretty good. So if this redraws the screen anyway, once we get to this point, it doesn't matter that these have R's on them. But I am going to draw. Just press press any key. Press any key to retry. I mean, we could programmatically determine which are invalid modes if they have like zero, zero, <laughs> like mode one, but that's all right. Um, select again, that's fine, it's whatever. I just want to say if we choose a text mode and it's invalid, it'll say error mode number is invalid. Press any key to select again. Like, I know the text is jank now, but press any key, it'll go back. So, escape. If we do invalid and then escape, then we have to press it twice, right? But that's okay. And then that breaks it because <laughs> we didn't really set a mode. Oh, that's great. Uh, it did break it. That's interesting. Can I break it again? So I set an invalid mode, escape twice. Okay. It's probably not great. That shouldn't have reset our modes. Escape return success. That would have been from this. Would have done false, which would have broke. Which would have gone here. It should have drawn that stuff again. That's interesting. I wonder why it didn't do that. I guess it was stuck in an invalid state. I don't know. I gotta. I gotta research that. But anyway, we have. If you type things incorrectly and don't make egregious errors and break everything, um, then it doesn't not fail gracefully, and you can have a menu system. So, all right. I'm talking too much. So the next one of these. Hopefully, I'm not as as tired. But the next one of these, I'm gonna probably set up the GOP and do a similar thing as we did for the text mode. I can probably just copy this logic really and change a few places, but I'll do a similar thing to choose a graphics mode, which won't be all that different from selecting a text mode, but it's interesting. On emulation, I don't think it affects things. Maybe the SDL UI for QEMU affects the text size, but I think on hardware, if you select a very low graphics mode, the text will get larger physically. So that might be good to test out and look at. But I'll, I'll set up the GOP in a graphics mode because we'll need to pass that stuff later on to the kernel anyway because it'll, it'll include info like the frame buffer location and size and stuff like that. Yeah, we'll set up the GOP in graphics mode. We'll blit some pixels and if that doesn't take too long, then I'll try to draw and set up um, a mouse cursor, right? To have mouse input and then we can say, okay, we've set up basic input and output systems. Uh, if I remember, I'll try to set up standard error for printing errors. If not, then yeah, it'll just be graphics mode. So look forward to that. Thank you for watching. My voice is dying. I need to sleep. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> Appreciate it. See you then and cheers.